Let's make it clear up front that the internet and the web are two different things, though we use them synonymously. The internet refers to the infrastructure or hardware that helps millions of computers all over the world connect, network and talk to each other. The web also referred to as the World Wide Web is the software that sits on top of the internet. The web helps us access information through the internet. A client is any device that you use to connect to the web. Also the web browser in your device that you make use of to access the web could be considered a client. The client is responsible for making requests for resources on a server and this is usually accomplished by typing a URL or clicking on links within your browser. A resource could be any file like a web or an HTML page, an image, any file type or a video. A server is a computer that hosts the resources. It responds to requests made by the client and delivers the resource to the client. Now take this URL as an example. Here google.com is the domain name of the website. The google portion of google.com refers to the name of the website. It is called the secondary level domain. The .com portion of google.com is called the top level domain and it gives you an idea of what sort of an entity the organization behind the website is. There are also country code top level domains .in for India, .fr for France, .hk for Hong Kong and so on. Now all devices be it the client or the server is tied to an IP address. The IP address serves to be an identifier for a device or a computer so it can identify and talk with another device on the internet. An IP address is a set of four numbers each separated by a period. Now each number in the set can have a maximum value of 255. Now that means an IP address could range from 0.0.0.0 to 255.255.255.255. Now this version of IP addressing is called IPv4. It allows for a combination of 4 billion IP addresses. Every website or application we visit would have an IP address tied to it. Imagine having to type out an IP address on the address bar of your browser for every website. It would be impossible to remember IP addresses for all websites. This is where the domain name system or the DNS comes as such a boon. The DNS allows for assigning human readable names to an IP address. So what actually happens is that once a request for a website is fired on your browser, the domain name system works behind the scenes to resolve the name of the website to its corresponding IP address. So let's say you either type the name of the website or click the link https://www.google.com on your browser. Your browser looks into the browser's or the operating system's cache to check if the IP address of the typed domain name exists. If it's not found in the cache, your browser communicates with the local DNS server. This being commonly your internet service provider for requesting the address of www.google.com. If the local DNS server does not have the IP address for the domain name in its cache, it requests a server called the root name server for the same. The root name server stores information of all top level domain name servers. And since the top level domain in your case is .com, it returns the IP address of the .com top level domain name server to your local DNS server. The local DNS server requests the .com top level domain name server for the address of the domain name and the top level domain name server responds with the address of the name server of the domain requested. So after reaching out to the name server of the domain requested, it responds with the IP address of the web server of the domain www.google.com. The local DNS server finally responds to your browser with the IP address of the domain name requested. And once the IP address of www.google.com is resolved, your browser shoots a request to the corresponding IP address and the Google server receives the request and responds with the web page. Now if you have come this far, you may want to believe that there is a single web server that does all the heavy lifting behind the scenes. This may be true for a small website. However, in the real world, popular websites get millions of requests per second and would find it very difficult to handle several million requests per second. Servers apart from handling requests also have to run application software and handle tons of data. Hence, servers are split into different types based on functionality in order to make handling of requests easier. And some of these types may include a web server, an application server, and a database server. So the web server is a machine that only handles the incoming HTTP requests. An application server is responsible for running the software of the web application written with backend programming languages. And the database server runs the database management system. This is where the data resides. The ease of handling requests on scale is further enhanced by server farms. The idea here is to replicate as many servers based on functionality and evenly distributing incoming requests with the help of another computer called a load balancer. This prevents any server from being overloaded.